I'm Bob North. I'm the Deputy Chief at the Berkeley, Michigan Department of Public Safety. Bob North was a patrol officer when the city of Berkeley consolidated its police and fire operations. Even before the consolidation, there was existing cooperation between the city's patrol officers and firefighters. In our particular local situation, as a police officer first, we were helping hook up holes to the hydrant and do things at fire scenes anyway because there weren't that many firemen and there weren't that many fires. It's recommended that cities considering consolidation create the business case for combining police and fire operations. Commitment from elected officials is key to a successful implementation. Gathering the right information is also critical. Having clarity about the current state of police and fire operations helps leaders move forward with a plan that addresses the real needs of the community. How busy are you in a given day? How many minutes are busy on a specific type of operation? And then you have to have an idea of how much you have in equipment and you have to have the political will. If you do not have the political will, then there's no point in even getting started. Information that would be helpful for the decision makers will be a study regarding uh, the number of personnel, a time and activity study on how often it is that uh, you are busy on things, uh, your crime rate, the number of fire responses, and then the breakdown of the response that actually result in working fires. Uh, you, you have to have all of this information put together, uh, you know, peak times of responses, what times of day are your busiest. A time activity and personnel study needs to be prepared. In, in clear, concise language so that everybody can understand it. Having an effective communication plan is a key element of a successful consolidation. It's incumbent upon city managers to always look at different ways of doing business if it's going to benefit the community anyway. So if you're going forward with this, it depends on what state you're in, whether or not there's police and fire unions, what working conditions they have, or what the contracts say. And, um, then you have to take all of this together and go to your elected officials and say, look, we are in a situation where we have to be more fiscally responsible. We have to beef up our force so everybody can do more than one thing and we can provide better service to the community because of that. Communication to the residents will have to be determined in a joint effort between the elected officials and the city manager. How is this information going to be out? Is it going to be a, a mailing, an emailing? Is it going to be a town hall? Uh, is it going to be a town hall presentation or a town hall question and answer? That's something locally will, will have to be decided. But, but either way, it is important to get the information out to people. Everybody has a stake in this. Everybody's a stakeholder in this. And if you, want to, if you want to go to public safety consolidation, you have to be able to prove the point that we are going to increase our abilities across the board as far as people being cross-trained. And at some point in time, we're going to be able to be fiscally more responsible as a result of this. I would suggest that whatever, when the decision is taken to go forward, you always be factual and tell the truth. There is, mo there is nothing more demoralizing to patrol officers and command staff, and I came up through the ranks from cadet, than, than people are not forthcoming with information and gives the, the hint that there's game playing going on. It's a matter of being professionally responsible and being factual about what the information is and how we want to use that to achieve a public safety consolidation. Thank you.